Hello everyone, uh, it's your friendly malfunction here. Today I'm going to be talking about some uh, figurine stuff as well as uh, the latest comics I've got delivered this week, early week. Um, um, saved one from Saturday, which is really cool. So it's two lots of comics and one thing to do with um, toys figurines and stuff okay um, let's start with the first one all right so this one is from trade me it is i put a little little opening here um then bend it which is can happen and has happened but uh these are newsprints check these out okay so these are 5p uk Mighty World of Marvel. This is number 18. Week February 3rd of 1973. So, well, this is as old as I am. It's actually a, talking about February. So basically, it's the 3rd of February. And I bought this last week. On the 4th of February, I think it was. I think, yeah, I just checked. It was the 4th of February when I bought this. So, yeah, this is what... Um, this is like the um, 2000 AD comics, you know, um, judge, featured in Judge Street, of course. Um, and there's newsprint. I've got a bunch of those. I love me some Judge Street. It's one of my earliest. Um, that's why I'm so. Um, I write so many sci fi stuff. I mean, I think sci fi and futuristic and dystopian and think about the future a lot because of being raised on stuff like Star Trek and. Uh, in 2018, they were like my, you know, my spine basically for how I think about the world and stuff. They, they balance each other out. Once like the dystopian future, once about utopian future, right? So I have a good balance when it comes to stuff. I, I hope. So the, here's, um, here's a pretty cool um, picture of Hulk. And he goes, Hulk doesn't care how many attack him. Hulk can smash all of you. All right. I don't think I'm even doing the voice right, but this is bonus. Another secret behind the uh, mystery of Foom. If I remember Foom, isn't Foom the dragon? Or is that something else? So so these are like, you know how everybody's like talking about like minimal colors and stuff. I mean, I love minimal colors. But here you got green. for You know, like you got the whole bits in the green and stuff. And these are really cool. Like, check it out. It's just green and, um, and black and white. Uh, we we'll call it noir, of course, in the trade. Um, so yeah, this is a Hulk comic book, and oh, and there's Spider-Man shows up. Right, there's, there's this little bit here. Spider-Man versus a lethal living brain. The Fantastic Four at the mercy of the Submariner. Sorry about the lighting. I didn't realize it was going to be like kind of on and off on there. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so you got you got Fantastic Four, Spider-Man. And the Hulk, this is a 40-year-old, uh, yeah, I mean, not 40-year-old, geez, I'm 49 this year. So uh, this is a 49-year-old comic book, seriously, this year. It's, uh, yeah, it came out about 49 years ago, last week. Isn't that cool? 1973. So you put, you're looking at the bottom one there as well. So this one here, this is extra new facts about Foom. This is number 17. So that was 18, this is 17. So this is the week before, January 27th, right? Same deal. This is a Fantastic Four, Hulk, and Spider-Man. But this one's got the Vulture on it, right? I mean, check it out. Is that cool or what? Um, so 49-year-old 40, comic books. Fantastic Four and the Death of a Puppet. Stan Lee, Jack Kirby. Look at that, right at the top here. All right. Fantastic Four and Death of a Puppet. Look at the art. Man. Some awesome art. Uh, look at Sue, Sue Richards. Is that cool? Invisible Girl. And it's very, it's so, um, the newsprint on this, it's like so soft and so, um, 
uh, what is it called? I was going to, always going to say, uh, I don't know what I was going to say. It, it'll rip CG. It's so tender. Uh, that's what I was going to say, tender. But it's not really the right word, is it? Um, it'll come to me sometime. Yeah, so next week, the Samaritan returns. And of course he does. There he is. So, yeah, two, you know, one week. And these are 5p. Um, I guess they'll be like about five pound now, right? With the way inflation is and all that. What do I know about that? I'll let somebody else I'll deal with all that sort of side of things when it comes to business. All right, so let's that let's leave that to the side for a bit, and let's there. And I want to talk about the cheapness of um, toy fig figurines coming out these days. Uh, of course, this is Lucasfilm, and this is Kenner, uh, put up by Kenner, right? So, not cheapness in the sense that, like, it's cheap to buy. No, these are freaking expensive to buy. But here's the thing. Each one of these have two holes, like, they have holes at the bottom in the in the feet, right? So, like, this, this thing here, right? So, uh, most figurines that come out these days, they have... They're pretty, you know, pretty full on, and they, you know, you have to like. I mean, it's always been the case. You got, in the old days as well. You had to make sure that they stood up properly, and so on. And you got the articulation and all that. But these days, they can't even afford, or not afford, because here's the thing: you're the one who's, as a customer, you're the one who's going to pay for it no matter what, because you want the figurine, right? And nowadays, they don't even put the stands in them. And some of them, like, I mean, like I said, they don't put the stand in this one, right? How are you supposed to, you know, put this little figurine up here uh, to stand of um, Griff Kag Kaga, right? Uh, isn't that Apollo Creed? I can't remember. I was kind of getting confused. Maybe he is. Maybe. Who knows? Um, and it's, um, you know... You got to go out of your way to buy to another piece of plastic. So the reason I'm saying that, and I try, Rico told me last week I was I wasn't as negative as the video previously, but I, I try to balance it out <laughs> because but you you can't help not be negative about these things because you check this out right, or like they don't even make these that much separately anymore. I've looked for them, and the cool thing is why I mentioned these is because. I actually had someone on, um, you know, uh, gentleman Carlos jump on um, on the action figures collection site, right? Talk, say, hey, I've got, I've got five stands. Anybody wants them? I'm going, yeah, I need them because I have so many figurines, right? And the thing is, I have so many figurines, and majority of them, like fifty percent of them, don't have any stands for them, and I want to. And I want to put them up to, you know, so I can put them in stands and stuff. And so they will, you know, so I can, so they'll be able to basically, you know, stand the damn thing up, right? And the worst is, right, that they don't, you know, this is, these are DC ones. Oh, well, I guess that one is a DC one, right? And say Cyberpunk, it's a Cyberpunk figurine. So he's probably, he said he had, he had a few of those ones as well. So I said, I will take whatever you got. Because at the end of the day, I want, you know, I want to be able to display them. I have problems with, like, space. So, and I want to be able to, um, I'm limited to space, I should say. Because I, I have business stuff at the same time and all that. And i got to make that space all the time. So i got to be able to, like, you know, make sure that, I, you know, everybody wants, as a collector, you want to display what you collect, especially if it's action figures and stuff like that. And so there's a, there's two Cyberpunk ones I've got here, and and um, three DC ones, right? So I don't really care if they're DC or Cyberpunk. I'm just going to put, put them on there so I can stand them up, right? Because I want to be able to display my figurines. And the other thing is not not all of them are always the same size, right? So this isn't even going to fit into that one, which is okay because I have one for, for Wolverine, right? Which I got off another one because 
that means that other one I've got now doesn't have a figure um, a stand right but I want to display my old man Ro Logan with my um, old you know old man uh, Hawkeye and it sucks when you can't do that because they don't send you the stands and you have to go find stands elsewhere or separately buy them which is what I mean or I mean yeah find stands elsewhere or separately buy them from people who have spare ones and these were cool I mean like basically cost me about a dollar each including postage I mean yeah so it works out quite well and I'm happy for that so thank you Carlos made my day on that um, and yeah right so I mean when you go out and spend like whatever these things cost right the last thing you want to you know that's why I don't even bother um, like taking them out anymore because there's no point because you can't display them so you might just leave them in the box right and display you know and display just the ones that actually come with stands like look at this one right I can't remember who put these out um, but this is bullet you know this is this is from Fox right and this is from Alita Battle Angel as you can see on the dock and and yeah and it's it's got the square one right solid piece boom stands right perfect but I mean you know this is what I, like same thing I was like think so like the other thing is um, Funko is annoying as well right so they do this this one here is like an older um, oh, I can't remember her name uh, Bunny, I can't remember her but, um, first name. Laura, is it Laura Bunny? Anyway, so this is from um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, right? And so you have to, to display it, you have to get the, sp the speaker stand, I mean, sorry, mic stand right perfectly to stand on this little thing here. Now, if you just had a freaking little hole in there for the stand, then you could make it stand up. So I don't know who designed this one, but seriously, uh, you know, sometimes, I mean, they all cost the same. So a little, a little holes, a little less plastic. So the cost, I mean, you know, it's just not uh, very s smart, I guess, to not have a stand. It's one of the things when I was, uh, when we were designing our, uh, shoot, let me see if I can fit one around here. When I was uh, when I was designing, or not I was designing. I mean, when I designed the um, the actual two D image of um, of my Incredible figurine, I um, I made sure. Sorry, I'm far away from there. I would prefer to put this out. Didn't even think about putting this out. Uh, I I sort of made sure. To ask my uh, 2D designer for the SDL file to actually put in the holes because I knew with my with the art design that I did, um, I mean the 2D design I did, that the 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 size of the figure and the sh uh, thinness of the legs and the weight of it all, you know, it had to like fit. And this is these are all different. They're meant for all different sizes, and so you know we have these little things here where they actually f he's he's a great designer. I think um you know I've asked, I told him that I like to use them for more. But once I um you know once I get everything sorted, that you know this guy, Taz, amazing um artist, um two, um three D artist right for designing these folder files. So I think this is for the bigger size ones. So they're a bit different. Yeah, this is for the bigger size one, the next one up. Uh, but look, I um I asked, you know, I gave him the um the logo. I said, yeah, you know, can you do this? And this is the way this looks is not not because of his design. This is way because of the printer, the way um, the quality of the printer and stuff. But as you can see, he's done the foot where the foot actually fits in. So not only is the f it's only you know it's got the plastic um spokes spokes spigots i don't know uh you know bolt let's say it's bolt and the nut which is you know part is 
there where it actually folds into the space here um and it and it sits perfectly right with the with the right size one this is a different size of course and so um and it hasn't been cleaned either so these plastics have to supposed to come off but i just love the design that he's done based off my uh, of my art because I do chibi, I, I like chibi thing. I, I try to do chibi for my, all my characters from now on. That's my covered <laughs> way I'll do. This is my sort of artistic thing to it. I've decided I'm not going to do any um, actual artwork or illustrations, I should say. But I'll design the characters the way I want it, pass it on to my guys. And I'm working with like six different artists. But this, you know, working with Taz here was seventh. And he's, you know, but um, yeah. So we paid him to design these and... Um, yeah, some of them really come out really good, depending on the quality of the printer and stuff. But we're looking at doing loose, um, I think it's loose wax, some some sort of thing, resin drop to get these right. So that they we can do more because uh, it takes ages for the printers to print these out. And then, of course, as you can see, the color, depending on, I mean, not the color, the smoothness of it, it leaves lines depending on the type of an um, age or whatever of the of the printer but these came i mean I, i'm happy with this i mean like i get to see the physical 3d version of characters i've designed this is incredible of course um and you know i just i got to design this i designed this character from scratch and then i also designed the chibi i mean for the comic and then i also designed a chibi design which this is and then he's gone across and like 3d it and you know, I gave him designs of what the back would look like and stuff like that. It's such a cool, I mean, I really enjoyed it. It was a great process and stuff. All right, enough about that. All right, so for the, let's get to the final comics. Um, and then we can finish off here. All right, so this is another one. I didn't look inside. Um, I just opened up, so enough for me to, uh, thing. I didn't even figure out, look to see who, who I got this from or what it is. So let's do this. Let's go. And how's that? This is a trade paperback complete set. And this is the weird thing. This is like the now on HBO series, the most hated series okay sorry a negative thing but i try but i'm gonna tell you the positive sides okay gotta blend it out like i say all right it's weird the color of this i don't know i'm just like i'm sure they're supposed to be blood red did they actually like lighten the make it pink for the cover of this yeah look it's vibrant inside. So i'll have to get my um i'll give me a moment i'll i'll go and get my um my absolute watchman. Right. So, oh gosh. Yeah. Uh, the other day, I actually dropped this, if I remember. I accidentally dropped this while I was trying to move things around. So it got, got dented. But this is the absolute, um, and got dented here as well. But, but uh, and there, which sucks because this is the absolute. Uh, version and of yeah see I was right can you see the pinkness of it between the two that's a brand new book right you can see yellow's right but the pink they made the blood go pink it's weird it's weird dude it's weird so that's weird, isn't it? So, let's, yeah. So, um, yeah. This, the absolutes come in a hard cardboard, heavy duty box, right? This is about 100, 150. This is like about ten years ago I bought it. And anyway, so let's leave that there. The doomsday clock. Ugh. All right. So, the absolute watchman has a lot of stuff in it and of course it's one of my you know one of my favorite uh, graphic novels by one of my favorite writers and and the other thing is it's oversized as you can see you got you got your um your normal comic book size 
and then you've got your oversized which means the, everything's bigger and brighter and uh, you know easier to read lots more information um, you know you have you have the 12 issues um, and you have the scripts in fact as well did I damage it? no it didn't lift from the back too much I thought I damaged it but it's just moving out of the slipcase so you get all the covers uh, you get the um, changes and you know what's got to stick out the pencil um, you know ah oh, gosh the cover designs the character designs you know you get tons of all the stuff it's just amazing you know the minutes <laughs> you know Alan Moore talking about it talking about it you know talking about George starting where George Orwell left off I began wor work on that eventually I'm sorry starting where George Orwell left off I began work on what eventually became Watchmen in 1984 how's that All right so you can see it's like yeah, the designs and all that. So it's, I mean, not designs, sorry. Yeah, character designs. Ah, oh, what am I thinking? Pencils, you got the owl, you got, you got Dr. Manhattan, you got uh, Thunderbolt, Ozymandias, Ozymandias, Mandias, Mandias. And of course, you have Roches. I've got Roches here somewhere, I think. Um, it's somewhere on the shelf. Or it might be might yeah no he's still on the shelf somewhere um where is he in this big box i've been moving this week um this weekend i was moving stuff around actually it was friday uh, because um we had ward um not wardrobes yeah what yeah a cupboard wardrobe delivered and i was having to um move the whole pl um, place around so i could fit stuff fit them in and so I stuck everything into a um, 40 liter liter container and so yeah I don't yeah it's just behind me here let me let me show you it's just behind here and it's just I'm not sure if it's in there and I don't want to move too much too many I mean things around because it might just break something else off and not and I just don't like that because otherwise it'd be annoying as. Okay, so let's get back to this. So it's, you know, it comes with a slipcase, all right? Red in the back, yellow in the front. So you got your blood, all right? You can see, we'll see what I mean. All right, they made it pink. They're afraid of the front. That's what, yeah, they're very, that's what, it's like I don't remember it being pink, right? Like seriously, I don't remember the blood being pink. I remember it being blood. Blood ain't pink. It's red. It's um, ruby red, as they say. All right, cherry almost. Um, and it, and on a darker skin like mine, it looks like it's almost like. What would you? It's not. It's definitely not fire engine red. That's for sure. But it's definitely not pink, which is quite sad. So yeah. So twelve. Issue graphic novel. Let's see if there's anything. Ah, uh, here we go. So this one's got different types of um, uh, notes and stuff, and this in the back of this graphic novel compared to that one. I'm not sure if it, that one had the same thing, but yeah, there's some really cool stuff in here as well. Is that cool? Design of is that silk? I think that's silk. But yeah, like. He does a lot of notes and, um, you know, Blue Beetle, ordinary, fallible human, heroic, though not naturally courageous, scientist, deep thinking, stuff like that. Um, so that's sort of like, it's notes for himself to figure things out and I guess notes for, um, is it Kevin, o it's not Kevin O'Neill, is it David Lloyd, if I remember right? Gosh, how could I forget? No, Dave Gibbons, see? It's Kevin O'Neill, Dave Lloyd, and Dave Givens that have worked with Alan Moore. So those three people I always get confused about. So, you know, this is um, Dave Givens' notes. And it's just, yeah, his, like, um, his designs, his pencils, uh, inks, 
on top of his pencils. And here's the thing. This week, I um, this past weekend, I visited my nephew. Uh, well, I visited my sister-in-law. And um, so my... Um, at the end, just before I was leaving, and my um, my brother-in-law goes, Hey, uh, go and see such and such. And I asked him to show you the comics he's done recently. He's done really some good work. Um, and I said, walked in, I said, oh, so you got some stuff for me to put on the website. And so he grabs his notebooks, rushes out, and then I go and, you know, then I go sit down with him. I go, okay, show me your, show me what, what comics have you done? So he pulls out this, um, his notebook and he's never had a notebook before. And my sister tells me that he's, she's just given him a notebook because his, he's been drawing on pages for the last so many years. And so because he's been drawing on pages for so many years, it's the you know it's hard to find where his things are. So my sister bought him a notebook, and he was slowly filling it up. And he was showing me, and he goes, "Okay, so he goes, this happens here." And he's totally like, I taught him how to panel things out. And this is when it was like about, about four years ago. I might have got him to panel things out. So he was paneling things out, and um, and he's doing his drawings and he's coloring them in as well now. So with his pencils. So he's doing his. Uh, he's doing exactly what Dave Gibbons is doing here, which is doing his own um, bubbles. And then he's, you know, writing in within the bubbles and stuff on the page. And so I, said, I looked at him and said, oh, your pencils are fading. And he's like, you know, uh, I'll give you ink. You can either, oh no, I said, uh, you can either do it on, like, scan the artwork and put it onto uh, the software I gave you, which is Clips to Your Paint, because I, I I had it on. Um, I had a copy of it. I bought a copy of it, and I just gave it to him. And then I'm I'm on a weekly, a monthly one now, where I get you know it's just live updates. So he gets to keep a solid one for himself. And you, you can do all this stuff on there. But he's like, you know, he's like I, I just want to learn how to do it within the lines. So I'm like, oh yeah, cool. So I said, what I'll do is I'll get you ink pens. And so when he came home, my um, and I also decided to give him a notepad. So it's a big, huge notepad about this side. His one that he had was a bit, it's just a bit bigger than that, half this size, right? So probably about that size was what he had. So I gave, so um, I, my friend, um, artist friend, uh, Shane Evans, who's, you know, who's a local artist, uh, comic book artist, and someone who I draw, uh, who I draw, who draw? Uh, who does the red dot, red dot comics with me, and is also part of our um, enterprise, um, Plant Enterprises, and involved with that. But he's doing a um, a one shot, uh, about sixty page, sixty four page, one shot comic book of um, of Red Dot, and so the, I'll get the character. Talk about unplanned, right? I never think of what I'm going to talk about most of these times, and so it just happens this time. Um, Because I think I find it easier doing it off the cuff than planning things out because I forget anyway. So this is his artwork here. And so he keeps telling me that I got to do, um, you know, this is just one of the pages that we did. Sorry, he's got dust in it. It's been sitting in a cupboard with the doors open. And so, I mean, not cupboard. It's like it's the display unit. And so with with that, he's, um, you know, he's been telling me to, um, I should um, draw because I always tell him to draw this for me and draw that for, uh, for me and so he gave me I think it was last for my birthday yeah he get for my birthday he gave me this pad which is about a bit, a bit larger than this ring bind ring pad right so you could basically you can rip a page out and the rest is fine and so I, I gave my nephew that and I just thought it's just sitting there. I'm not going to be using it because I do everything digital now. Um, and it's, I think for me, I'm like thinking, well, if I'm going to, if I'm doing everything digital, why is, why should I leave a pad there? Even though it's a gift to me, it's of, it's going to be of more useful to my nephew who can draw it and use it. And I'm not trying to, you know, think, but I'm just being practical about this because, you know, not not only am I just um, I'm letting him use it and it's becoming useful, but it's actually you know it's something that he can um, keep his work in, in. 
and he'll be able to have a bigger size and of a pad to work on so he's not constrained to size because it's like you know it's like when you have glasses uh and you don't need glasses all of a sudden and you can see it better it's, it's that sort of thing i feel about when you have a bigger size so i'm quite glad that i you know that um, i hope he gets to use it and enjoy the pad to draw on and that he'll you know it'll give him a bit more motivation even though he already has he's a lot of motivation in drawing his uh cartoons he's doing at the moment and he's repeating the designs which is what you need when you're young and starting to learn he's only about 12 he's been drawing for a while so if if he's like um learning to draw for a while right but he's getting better and better and he's being very precise about what he's drawing is he's, he's gone through different sort of um, things that he's liked and he draws that and i want you know i will really want him to get in five years to be able to just boom you know draw any character he can think of but i also wanted him to create his own uh, ideas and stuff and i said to him you know uh, because i want to feed into his creativity and i said look whenever you're ready i will put your stuff i'll pay you and i'll put your stuff because it's my nephew you know whatever you know whatever he thinks is right i'll pay him and i'll put his card comic strips on our website on plungedcomics.com because not only you know he gets to see his stuff there but other people get to see what he does this is a 12 year old kid who's been drawing for a couple of years now and learning to hone his artwork the way he can and tell stories the way he can and he i don't i'm not going to stop him from saying what he wants into his stories because this is a kid who's going to grow up to be doing awesome stuff but even now is very skilled right and at telling stories at being quick and he's real smart and so i think uh, with youth you gotta you know when kids are into stuff certain stuff you gotta look at what it is is it productive if it's product uh, like not productive if it's good for them to get into like reading or writing and stuff or art and stuff computers um whatever it is you know if you can kind of um, lean them towards learning more or help them to with the products to uh, you know say here's a pen a pencil here's a pad whatever it is you know here's a tutorial whatever you can do to help them to get more into it because it's something that they will hold on to later on in life if they want to think about what career they want to get into so with that i'll leave that but yeah so um yeah i'm always about sort of wanting to you know use what i know to get people to get into stuff that i love uh and comics is one of the things so as you can see there like i said pink i don't even think this is faded because look look at the it's not faded at all and i think it's just because it's the way they did it i wonder if if i'm the only one do you if do you think i'm the only one who, uh who's got a copy that's got pink blood on it compared to the absolute which is red blood it's the most if you guys have a copy of this watchman trade right that's come out with the hbo thing can you let me know if you're you know uh in the comments if your trade paperback of watchman the most recent release of it uh which is the hbo series print if it's pink like this or if it's red like that because i really want to know so i'll leave that with that okay have a good week guys and we'll see you next time wherever you are be well be safe